What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Sunday, March 24th, 2024, and I have an emergency alert to share with you guys. Right now, it is 1922 Eastern Time here in the United States, and we currently have a severe geomagnetic storm in progress. This is a G4 class geomagnetic storm. And this is the second highest level on the scale created by NOAA. So the highest is a G5. We're at a G4. And NOAA is expecting auroras, aurora borealis, to be visible as far south as Alabama and California. So if you have clear skies tonight, go outside after sunset in an area with little light pollution and a clear view to the north and preferably on some high ground and you might see these auroras i'm going to be out there with my camera and i'm hoping and praying that i get to see this because i've only seen an aurora once in my life and that was a few months ago and and it wasn't really that vivid but this one looks like it's going to be really vivid, and we have clear skies tonight here in northern Pennsylvania. So if I do catch any footage, I will be uploading it tomorrow or Tuesday. But this is the result of an X-class solar flare. It was an X 1.2 class solar flare. And NOAA is saying that there could be some impacts to GPS, high-frequency radio propagation, and there could even be some impacts to our power grid, okay? So you may want to put some of your sensitive electronics in EMP bags, or if you don't have EMP bags, put them in a metal trash can or just wrap them in aluminum foil. And I want to just update you guys on the situation in Russia and Ukraine. We have some very serious news coming in today. I didn't really want to report on it earlier because it is Palm Sunday and today is a day of prayer and fasting and reflection and you know we're supposed to try to work on ourselves as Christians to try to become better Christians be more like Christ. So I didn't want to come on here and report negative news. However, I do want to update you on what's going on. So late last night, there was a massive missile strike on Ukraine. And during that strike, there was a Russian cruise missile that flew into Polish territory. And it flew into Polish territory for 39 seconds, which according to my calculations at a speed of about 600 miles an hour, that would amount to covering about five or six miles inside of Poland. So that's pretty significant. However, in December, there was a missile that flew into Poland on December 29th that flew as far into Poland as 40 kilometers and was in the air for three minutes over Poland. OK, so it looks like Poland is going to start shooting these missiles down when they get close to Polish airspace or when they enter Poland. But this is very, very serious. So I want to update you on that. And we have reports coming in from Russian and Ukrainian open source intelligence stating that Russia is about to launch the biggest missile strike on Ukraine ever with as many as 26 nuclear capable bombers getting ready to carry out attacks on Ukraine. Now, each one of these nuclear capable bombers can carry about a dozen nuclear capable air launched cruise missiles, the AS 15 Kent or also known as the KH-101. These are the cruise missiles that Russia has been using against Ukraine. They've been using their Soviet stockpiles of their AS-15 Kent cruise missiles, which the Soviets stockpiled by the thousands to prepare for nuclear war. And these AS-15 Kent cruise missiles are nuclear capable. That's what a lot of people don't understand. They're using conventional warheads now but they are nuclear capable. So all these missile strikes that Russia has been conducting against Ukraine over the last two years, they've been using nuclear capable missiles and nuclear capable bombers. 
So if they ever did decide to launch a tactical nuclear strike on Ukraine, it would simply be a matter of changing out the warhead and putting the nuclear warheads on them. So Russia has basically practiced a nuclear strike on Ukraine basically dozens and dozens of times over the last two years, okay? So this could amount to easily hundreds of missiles being launched at Ukraine. It could happen tonight. It could happen tomorrow night. There were also reports of as many as 13 MiG-31K fighter bombers getting ready to uh, go into the air, which each carry one Kinzel hypersonic missile, which can also be armed with a thermonuclear warhead. Keep in mind, none of this has been officially confirmed yet by the Ukrainian government or Western sources. Okay, but we do have several open source intelligence sources, both Russian and Ukrainian, saying that as many as 26 Tu-95 bear bombers, those are the nuclear bombers that Russia has, getting ready to launch missiles on Ukraine. They haven't taken off yet. Apparently, they're still on the ground, okay? But 26, each capable of carrying a dozen missiles, I want to just let you guys know that the last two missile strikes on Ukraine, the one last night and then the one Thursday night where they went after the dam, they had like 13 or so bombers airborne during those strikes. So just to give you an idea of the scale, it would basically be like the last two strikes combined into one, okay? That could happen tonight. It could happen tomorrow night. And I just want to remind you guys that today was the national day of mourning for the victims of the concert hall shooting in Moscow, as declared by Vladimir Putin. So I don't think Russia is going to launch the strike tonight. That's just my opinion, because it was a day of mourning. So it would be inappropriate for them to just suddenly launch a big missile strike. Although anything is possible with Vladimir Putin, but I personally believe he's going to either wait until later on tonight or tomorrow sometime. And the Russian Ministry of Defense has announced that a MiG-31 Foxhound interceptor aircraft was scrambled earlier today from an airbase in northwestern Russia to track and escort a pair of U.S. Air Force B-1 Lancer strategic nuclear-capable bombers that were on a patrol in international airspace over the Barents Sea and appeared to be heading towards Russian territory. The U.S. has since confirmed this and said that the Russians did, in fact, intercept two B-1 bombers that were flying out of Moran Air Base in Spain. This update was sponsored by My Patriot Supply. Guys, My Patriot Supply has brought back their 25% discount on their three-month emergency food supply. And to get the discount, you got to use the link preparewithnyprepper.com. And the link is in the description below this video. But this three-month emergency food supply has a 25-year shelf life. It includes over 2,000 calories per day. Breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks all contained within six rugged water-resistant buckets. And free shipping is included so use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get $200 off or 25% off of the My Patriot Supply 3-month emergency food supply. The link is in the description below this video. Free shipping is included. They also have a general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products and they're always running various discounts and to get to their general store you just got to click on the My Patriot Supply logo when you get to preparewithnyprepper.com at the top of the page, and you'll see their general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products, and they're always running discounts here. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three-month emergency food supply, and the link is in the description below this video. And they were from the 7th Bomb Wing from Dias Air Force Base in Texas. The interception took place near the Kola Peninsula. And the Russian MiG-31 followed the B-1s until the B-1s entered Norwegian airspace. 
and I have some flight paths I want to share with you. I was actually tracking these bombers early this morning, but I didn't want to report on it just yet because I wanted to see where they were going to go. Okay, so I was tracking this late last night before anybody else reported on it. And I'll show you guys the flight paths of some of these uh, aerial refuelers that were with these bombers, okay? And Dmitry Medvedev posted this on Twitter this morning talking about the concert hall shooting. He said, we will avenge each and every one and those who are involved, regardless of the country of origin and status, are now our main and legitimate target. You just wait, bastards. That's what he wrote, okay? Those who are involved, regardless of the country of origin and status, are now our main and legitimate target. Now, we've already heard him blame Ukraine. We've already heard him blame the West. Uh, Putin has already said that Ukraine prepared a window of escape for these shooters, basically linking the shooters to Ukraine. And so we know where this is going, guys. Okay. They're going to launch a massive attack on Ukraine now, potentially nuclear, potentially chemical uh, against Ukraine, because they're going to come out with some phony evidence saying that, oh, look, we have evidence that Ukraine was involved or something like that. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But uh, we do know that there's uh, over two dozen bombers getting ready right now as we speak. And here we have the flight paths of these aerial refuelers that were joining the two B-1s that flew to the Kola Peninsula. Now, this is serious, guys, because these B-1s were flying towards Russia's northern fleet. Okay, the Kola Peninsula is this peninsula in northwestern Russia, close to Finland, and that's where Russia has over half of their nuclear-armed submarines. They have their main base there for their nuclear armed submarines in Murmansk. Okay. And so I knew something was up when I was checking the flight tracker as I do every night before I go to bed. I always check the flight tracker over Europe and I saw three of these aerial refuelers heading northeast over Scandinavia. And I knew something was up because of the call signs. You see the call signs, Rake 70, Rake 71, Rake 72. These are the aerial refuelers that accompanied the B-1s that launched those airstrikes over Yemen. You remember that? When they launched those airstrikes over Yemen initially, like two or three months ago. So anytime you see an aerial refueler with the call sign Rake, especially Rake 70, then those are the refuelers that are used to refuel the B-1s. Okay, so they were heading north. You can see all three of them here over northern uh, Norway. And then here you can see where the refuelers turned eastward towards Russia, and then they turned their transponders off. So this is very provocative, guys, for the U.S. to fly two nuclear-capable bombers right to Russia's main nuclear-armed sub base is very provocative. That would be like the equivalent of Russia flying their nuclear bombers to Kings Bay, Georgia, or to the Puget Sound in Washington, which are the two areas where our nuclear armed subs are based at. Okay, that would be extremely provocative. Okay, so this is extremely serious. This was done literally just, you know, an hour or two after the news broke of the missile that came into Polish airspace. So this was clearly a show of force. OK, and two of the shooters in the Moscow concert hall attack on Friday night have arrived at the Basmani court in the Russian capital of Moscow, where they will receive their initial sentencing. And images have been released on Telegram showing Russian security officials using a torture method involving an electrical device being attached to these suspects testicles causing them to be electrocuted during an interrogation okay so then when they were interrogating these shooters they connected basically like you know a jump jump starter to their to their balls okay and they were shocking them by their balls okay so 
Um, for all we know, these could just be random people that they plucked out of the blue and, you know, they're just using them as, you know, like uh, a fall guy, in other words, you know, so they could show the people that, oh, yeah, we arrested someone, we found someone, and they could have just plucked some random dude out of a prison and drugged them, you know, so he doesn't know what's going on. And they, they're basically staging the whole thing. I mean, it's pretty impressive that they caught them that fast. And I find it hard to believe also that they would catch the shooters that fast. I mean, literally less than a day after it's pretty uh, unprecedented. And the mall in St. Petersburg was evacuated after a bomb threat. This is in St. Petersburg, Russia. Here you can see people running out of this mall. This was earlier today, okay? And in Moscow's Sheremetyevo International Airport, a flight got delayed to Yerevan after a passenger claimed she had a bomb in her carry-on luggage. This was reported by TASS and RIA Novosti, which are uh, Russian state media agencies. And French President Emmanuel Macron has convened an emergency meeting of the Defense Council of the Republic at the LSA Palace in response to the attack in Moscow. This was reported by AFP. And this came after Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk put Polish security services on high alert and said that there would be extreme regional consequences after this attack on the Moscow Concert Hall. And France has raised their security level to the highest level after this meeting that was convened by Emmanuel Macron. Okay, so very serious, guys. Europe is now on high alert. Poland is on high alert. France is on high alert. And here we have some video footage coming out of Russia showing more tanks and war machines heading towards Ukraine. I'm not sure exactly where this is. But you can see a bunch of tanks here heading towards the front. And the head of Poland's National Security Council, Jacek Szewiera, says that NATO must change its stance on how it defends the alliance's airspace. He says that all Russian missiles must be shot down. And spokesman for the Polish Operational Command of the Polish Armed Forces said that the missile was not shot down because there could have been a risk of it crashing on civilian objects and that they knew the missile was going to leave Polish airspace based on its trajectory. Shooting the missile would involve a risk, said Lieutenant Colonel Jacek Goroszewski, spokesman for the operational command of the armed forces. According to Goroszewski, an attempt to shoot down the rocket would involve a greater risk for local residents. The rocket weighs over two tons, of which 400 kilograms, that's about 1,000 pounds, is a combat load. After shooting down the rocket, its remains would fall on our territory. The remains of the interceptor missiles used to shoot down the rocket itself would also fall here, he said. Ukraine's air defenses have learned that most Russian missiles come from the east or north. Defenders are less likely to expect an attack from the west. Therefore, the Russian Federation deliberately maneuvers its missiles in such a way that they make a circle and hit targets in Ukraine from the West, said Goroshevsky. So that's why Russia has been sending missiles into Poland. They're basically using Poland to attack Ukraine from the Western direction because Ukraine doesn't expect that. They expect the missiles to come from the North, from Belarus, or from the Northeast, or from the East, okay? He also explained that the decision not to shoot down the missile was made by the operational commander of the armed forces. The decision resulted from information from our radar systems. The assessment of the missile's trajectory, speed, and altitude indicated that it would leave our airspace. It is the operational commander of the armed forces who assesses the situation and is authorized to make such a decision. On the other hand, a fighter pilot, even if he receives permission to shoot down such a missile, may not do so if he realizes that its remains could fall on a hospital or school. The location where such a shooting would take place is also important when making decisions, he noted. Okay, so it's not that simple. Oh, they should just shoot the missile down because, 
that could risk the missile parts landing on villages, landing on a farm and causing a big brush fire, okay, uh, taking out the power. I mean, these are massive missiles, guys. We're not talking about, you know, a tiny missile that's like four feet long and weighs 100 pounds. We're talking about, you know, a nuclear capable missile. These missiles were designed to carry nuclear warheads across the ocean. They're like 15 feet long. They're like the size of a Tomahawk missile, basically. Okay. They weigh as much as a car or a small SUV. Okay. And they're full of, you know, explosive material. So, uh, there's a lot of risk involved there. And also you got to think about the panic and the fear that that would cause if Poland shot down a Russian missile on a Sunday morning, on Palm Sunday morning, and Poland is a Catholic country. You know, 90% of Polish people are going to be going to church in the morning. And the last thing Poland wants to do is scare people on their way to church in the morning on Palm Sunday. Okay, a very, very important holiday in Poland. An advisor to the Polish defense minister, Mieczysław Bieniek, said the missile interceptors, that is the missiles that the pilots have on board, could have shot the object if it had gone deeper and was a threat. The missile flew one and a half to two kilometers deep into Poland. During the incident, four F-16s, two Polish and two American, flew into the air. Okay. And the foreign minister of Lithuania said on Fox News today, we should be sending a very clear message that the next time a missile violates NATO airspace, it will be taken down. And the Ukrainian armed forces announced this morning that the strike last night on Sevastopol in Crimea using storm shadow missiles resulted in damage to several infrastructure targets, a communication center for the Russian Black Sea Fleet. And they also say that they caused damage to two Rapucha class amphibious landing ships of the Russian Navy. Okay, so last night, Ukraine launched a very serious strike on Crimea. And I showed you guys the footage of that in my update earlier. And here we have some before and after pictures of this communication center for the Russian Black Sea Fleet. Here you can see a picture from just a few days ago. You can see this building here, the roof is intact. And then here you can see the picture from today, and there's a massive hole in the roof. So it was a direct hit on this communication site. And so this is going to affect Russia's ability to launch missiles from Crimea. Okay, they took down their main communications building where they use, you know, uh, intelligence and they have their radars and satellites and everything like that. It's like a command center. Okay. So this is going to slow down the Russians a little bit. It's not going to eliminate the threat, but it'll it'll kind of delay any strikes from this area while the Russians figure out where to relocate this command center to. And the situation in Belgorod continues to escalate. Here we have a video showing some air raid sirens going off in Belgorod. This is a Russian city and there's been rebels operating in this part of Russia, fighting against the Russian military. And the Russian military has since leveled an entire village on their own soil, trying to get rid of these rebels. They sent in the Spetsnaz. The Spetsnaz got eliminated by the rebels. They sent in tanks. The tanks got destroyed. And then they started launching artillery at the town of Kazinka, trying to exterminate the rebels. And they failed. And they literally leveled their own town. Okay, so... Putin is definitely losing patience here. We have the concert hall attack. We have the situation in Belgorod and Kursk. We have Crimea getting attacked. So I think Putin is going to do something really crazy and he's going to escalate very, very soon. It may not necessarily be tonight or tomorrow, but I think within the coming weeks, we're going to see a massive escalation. I think he's going to use weapons of mass destruction. I think he's going to potentially finish off that dam that he tried to destroy on Thursday, the Dnipro Dam, potentially take that out, which would melt down the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. So get prepared, guys.
this is literally in Russia, guys. This is literally in Russia. We have three Russian warships that just entered the Mediterranean Sea through the Straits of Gibraltar. That's pretty interesting. And here we have a video of some Greek communists spray painting NATO military equipment that was on a railhead and they spray painted killer on the side of this armored personnel carrier destined for Bulgaria. These are Greek communists. Okay, you can see here they're holding up the communist flag and uh, they're blocking the uh, railway. This is the NATO equipment that's destined for uh, Bulgaria and Romania and then potentially Ukraine. Okay, and apparently there's a huge complex of oil refineries in Russia where explosions were heard tonight. The Prokhodnaya Podizvastva in Nizhny Novgorod in Russia. That's where uh, these explosions were heard tonight. And Israel has reportedly agreed to release between 700 and 800 Palestinian prisoners as part of a new ceasefire and hostage release deal. And Kamala Harris said on ABC News today that an invasion of Rafah by Israel would be a mistake, and she has not ruled out retaliation against Israel if they go into Rafah. French President Emmanuel Macron reportedly warned Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that, that a Rafah forced population transfer would be a war crime. And we're getting reports from Hezbollah-affiliated media that apparently there was a rocket and drone attack on a U.S. base in Syria at the Karab Algier airport. Apparently three rockets landed inside and around the base, and there was also a drone attack on the base. There was no details on damage. And Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu apparently vowed to kill Yahya Sinwar, the leader of Hamas, and said that the Rafah invasion will happen. So that's some of the latest breaking news that I have, guys. Things are really escalating in Ukraine, and things are about to escalate in the Middle East once Ramadan is over and Israel commences with their invasion of Rafah, and then eventually their invasion of Lebanon to take out Hezbollah. We're going to see massive escalation there, but I'm very concerned about the situation in Ukraine with this concert hall attack. Putin's blaming Ukraine for it, and they're going to tie it to the West somehow. I'm telling you, it's just like Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I urge you guys to replay that game if you haven't played it in a while. Okay, The whole premise of that game is that there's this extremist in Russia that goes on a shooting spree at an airport, kills hundreds of Russians, and there was imbe an embedded CIA agent in that extremist group. And the Russians claimed that America was basically trying to overthrow Russia uh, by having the CIA working with this extremist group. They were trying to overthrow the Russian government that was in power at the time and replace it with these extremists. And then they launch a nuclear attack on Europe and the U.S. And they actually do a land invasion of the U.S., and uh, Europe, that could happen, guys. Okay, if they have some evidence that the U.S. was involved in this, or they make it up, that could happen. Okay, I hope not. I pray it doesn't happen, but I really fear for Ukraine and I fear for uh, Europe right now because I think Putin is going to do something crazy, and I do think that Poland is going to start shooting down these missiles when they get close to Polish airspace because there's already been four missiles that flew into Poland since the start of the war. This is the fourth missile, guys, okay? So that's pretty much it for this one. I will be back tomorrow with more updates, and if anything happens tonight, I will go live if necessary. Until next time, take care, God bless, and don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere. Guys, the world is getting crazier by the day. We're on the verge of World War III. The U.S. is drowning in trillions of dollars in debt. Inflation is at an all-time high, and there's no end in sight. So you need to prepare your finances for the future with precious metals. Precious metals are a great way to protect your hard-earned savings and retirement against inflation and the uncertainty of the stock market. 
Also, precious metals are good to have for the purposes of preparedness to be able to barter with people for essential supplies if the grid goes down. Every prepper should have at least a small amount of silver coins. The company I trust for my precious metals is Midas Gold Group. Text NY Prepper to 232425 for free information on precious metals. Midas Gold Group is 100% veteran owned and supports veterans through the Wounded Warrior Project. Midas Gold Group will work with you to convert part of your retirement savings into gold or to set up a gold IRA. And unlike many precious metals dealers, Midas Gold Group offers precious metals in small denominations, which is great for preparedness. So you have something tangible to use for bartering when the grid goes down. Precious metals have continuously risen in price over the past hundred years and are considered a safe investment. So text NY Prepper to 232425 for free information and to get started today.